This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first two guests today are both from Thunder Bay Theater. We're going to talk about Greece. I have Ashley Cotton and Jake Lanier. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning. I'm really excited about Greece coming to Thunder Bay Theater. What a great production. So how long have you been in rehearsals, Jake? Um, we've been doing them since about, I'd say, early October. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So what role are you playing, Jake? Um, I am Danny Zuko, the leader of the Burger Palace Boys. Yay. And Ashley, what about you? What role are you? I'm Sandy Dombrowski. Wow, yay. So now tell me about what kind of theater experience you've had to tell to date, Sandy. Um, I've been in... Sandy, I'm calling you character. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in three other shows before this one. Okay, and are they all singing roles or...? Uh, well, one of them was a musical, the other two weren't. Okay, so you like doing musicals, obviously. Are yeah. singing roles your favorite type of roles? I like any role that I can get, pretty much. I don't have a particular favorite. Really? <laughs> what about you, Jake? What's your favorite role? Um, I just recently started last year, so I've only been in three ah. shows as well. Although I was in two musicals, both of which were, or two of the three were which at Thunder Bay Theater and then a straight play. So you, are, you go to Alpena High School mm -hmm. and you just saw they were doing tryouts for Greece and you tried out? Yep. Okay, awesome. So what song did you sing for your tryout? Um, I sang Fool's Rush In. Okay. And what song did you sing for your tryout? I sang Torn. Okay, very good. So Jake, when can we come to Thunder Bay Theater and see Grease? Um, shows start November 27th. Okay. Um, the fir on every day except for Saturdays and Sundays, it'll be at 7. Okay. Except for on the 12th. Okay. Yeah, the 12th, we have two shows. Oh, good. Uh, we have an afternoon show, one at 2.30, and then a night show, which will be at 7.30. So give grandparents a chance to take the grandkids out to see the show. Good exactly. idea. Okay, so tell me about how Greece is going to be put on the stage at Thunder Bay Theater. It's a big production. How are they adapting it to the small stage? Um, I'm not quite sure yet. We haven't worked out everything. Haven't blocked it all out? Mm hmm Okay, so what songs are we going to hear? You'll be hearing all the favorites and everything. You're the one that I want, Summer Nights, Grease Lightning. Okay. Mm -hmm. And who are some of the other people that have some of the roles? Um, Sam Brooks is playing Rizzo and Kaylee Nitchman, Nitchman yeah. is playing Marty. Okay. All right. Any other characters? Um, there's Dane Mullaney playing Kanicki. There's Eli Irving playing Roger. Okay. There is Casey Larkin playing Duty. There is Cameron Miker playing Eugene. Keegan Bauer playing Patty Simcox. And Katie... Noyles playing Jan, and Miriam Denstadt playing Frenchie. Wow. Now, who's directing the production? Um, Jeffrey Mindot. Mindot. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. And so, obviously, it's a family production. Everyone should come and see it because it's a family show. Yeah, it's a blast from the past. So, adults will like it, and it'll bring kids from nowadays to come and know what Greece was to everybody else back when it first came out. And it was so popular when it first came out. So tell me, what kind of costumes are you going to be wearing? Um, retro 50 costumes, you know, the big poodle skirts and like button up blouses and stuff. Okay, and what about you? The guys will be wearing the nice sleek leather jackets with white shirts and black pants. And, okay. you know, Converse style shoes. I see. Have your Converse on? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, anything else you want to add about the production? Um, We've still got some time left, so... Do we? Yes, okay. we do. Um, I forgot to mention, on Sunday, the 13th of December, okay. we do have one show that will be at 7.30, and then Friday, the 11th of December, there will be no show. Okay, so no show on the 11th, and everybody can go to your web, web page because it gives all the dates and times for productions, and mm -hmm. just want to warn everyone that Alpina loves a musical, and this is a real popular one, so if you definitely want to come to the show, you need to call and get your reservations. Of course. And the number to call is? 989-354-2267. I did know the answer to that in case yeah. you didn't. Okay. And now you said you know what some of the other productions are that are coming up, Jake? Uh, after this one, I do believe it is Snow Queen okay. that will be happening, and then after Snow Queen will be 
The Taming of the Shrew. Ooh. Will there be any production or any parts for local people to partake in? I think in Taming of the Shrew there will be open parts because it's a main, there's mainly a bunch of male roles intended okay. from okay. what I've heard. Okay. And then um, for you, are you going to be trying out for any more productions locally? or? Um, hopefully I will be able to if I can find the time to. Kind of busy, huh? Yeah. Okay. All right, so one more time, tell us the dates and times we can come to um, see uh, Greece at Thunder Bay Theater. Right, the dates are November 27th to December 13th, okay. except for Friday the 11th. Saturday the 12th, there will be two shows, okay. one at 2.30 and another at 7.30. And then Sunday, we'll have a night show at 7.30 again. Okay, and once again, call the box office for tickets, 354-2267. Mm -hmm. Anything further to add? Um, I'm really glad that you could find the time to... Oh, I'm here. really glad that you're here yeah. and I look forward to seeing the production. I'm thinking that Saturday afternoon one sounds great to bring the grandchildren. Of course. All right. Thank you both no, very much. No problem. Thank you. I'll be right back with Stephanie Gandula from Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary following these messages. Welcome back. My last guest today is Stephanie Gandula from Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Nancy. And today we want to start out talking about your friends group, which is an integral, very important part of, of the sanctuary. Um, couldn't do it without them. Absolutely. The, the Friends of Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary exist to support the mission of education and outreach at the Marine Sanctuary. You know we do so many different educational programs yes. for all different ages. And like you just said, we could not do it without the Friends Group. Um, and so it's a separate nonprofit. And the Friends Group manages the sanctuary store. So that helps um, get some funds in. It also keeps the visitor center free and open year yes. round. And I don't know if you know, but we just decided for the winter to stay open on Sundays as well. Wow. So we're gonna be seven open seven days a week all throughout the whole year. Great idea yeah. for the families that work weekends or right. or um, you know, don't get the weekend off and right. get a chance to come in on a Sunday perfect. Yeah, yeah. So we're excited to be open on Sundays. And so the Friends Group does, you know, the visitor center and, and the sanctuary store, but they also do many fundraisers throughout the year and, and I'll talk about those in, in just a minute but I want to first get out there how people can become a friend. Yes. If you're not already a friend you can go to the thunderbayfriends.org that's mm -hmm. the website and you can sign up right there. Um, you can go to our Facebook page the Sanctuary Facebook page okay. and there's a join now right there okay. and if you're already a member now we're coming up to where you would renew your okay. membership and you know they will take the friends group is open and willing to members of all different types. I mean, you can donate $5 or you can donate more. And um, we really have been so pleased and, and honored with the folks yes. that, have, that have come and donated. We partner with a lot of uh, local businesses who uh, will donate in-kind um, donations and also partner with us on, on some of these fundraising events that I was talking about. And so one of them yes. is the, the film festival. I'm yes. going to bring that up first because that is right around the corner. It is. Um, the annual film festival. This is our fourth time doing it. And this has been one of the most successful fundraisers for the Friends Group. And it's a five-day event. I can't believe it's actually become five days. I know. I know. The first <laughs> Not just year, a weekend anymore. The first year it was the weekend right. and Friday night opening. And yep. like hopefully people come. Yes, and it's been so fun. Yes. It's one of my, I, I am the coordinator for the film festival, and it's one of my favorite parts of my job because I get to interact with so many different people in planning this event. I mean, there's, there's of course, all the volunteers that help with screening films. There's um, all the volunteers that do all the other things, everything from make popcorn to take tickets to act as an usher and get people to their seats and then there's the filmmakers yes. and then also the film community which I did not know about this before I started this this um, coordinating this festival but there's quite a film community in the state of Michigan and in the Great Lakes there is the film office and we've connected with the the state film commissioner ah. and she might even come to, to film festival I've got my fingers and you've actually crossed. gone to other film festivals to check them out I have yes yeah, some on the ground research which is super fun of yes. course but uh, yeah, there, and then there's a lot of film schools in the state of Michigan. Wow. So a lot of students out there, you know, learning how to be filmmakers. And that's really exciting to see these Great Lakes students, these Michigan students who want to tell the stories of the Great Lakes, whether it's history or um, environmental topics. So it's just such a dynamic event. I mean, there's, it's something going on all the time. We have the, the opening uh, party 
um, the reception. We also have a sneak peek where we partner with Thunder Bay Winery. We also have the wrap party, and then there's also the student film competition. Yes. Now that's new this year, and it's free to enter, and we'll be posting a lot about that on our Facebook page. Okay. But this student film competition is open to sixth graders to twelfth graders. Okay. And what they do is explore or answer the question, "What is water? What does water mean to them?" So it's hashtag water is, uh -huh. and um, we're excited to see the, the reception that the student film competition gets. It's the first time we're doing it, and people, the last few years going to the film festival, they're like, why don't you have a student competition? So we finally did it this year. Perfect. Yeah. And you know, what I've always liked is the, the different variety of filmmakers that you have come. It, I mean, it can be about anything as long as it has to do with the environment or the Great Lakes, right. but it's always so diverse. So can mm -hmm. you give us any sneak peek of who's coming this year? Well, let me see if I okay. can. Yes, we do have a um, pretty famous Great Lakes historian and filmmaker, used to be a broadcast journalist, Rick Mixter. Okay. Now he's done, I think, something like over 30 films all about wow. the Great Lakes. And we are going to be showing a couple of his films. And he, the word on the street is that he'll be visiting us this year and attending the film festival. That's so much fun for these filmmakers to travel in. We also have a Swedish film that, and this I'm not for sure yet, but it might be the U.S. premiere of this film called Mars, and it's not about the planet. It's actually about a shipwreck, uh -huh. a very old shipwreck, um, 1564. Wow. And the, this, the Swedish producers who made this film are considering visiting Alpina for the film festival as well. So those are just a couple sneak peeks. Of course, Big Brownie. Okay. Um, that was shown at the Brown Trout right. Festival, but hasn't been shown since. We also we did a sanctuary matinee, but if you didn't buy the movie, Big Brownie, which is all about brown trout, you have not had a chance to see it. So we're gonna screen it again at the film festival okay. and those filmmakers will be visiting as well. Perfect. That's just, you know, three of the over 50 films that we'll be showing. Wow, and what are the dates? The dates are January 27th okay. through 31st. And like I mentioned, this is a, a pretty much the, the biggest fundraiser for the Friends Group. We also do a big summertime fundraiser, which is the, the Battle of the Paddles, yes. where you can kayak race or stand-up paddleboard race. And those fundraisers, you know, they're super fun events in and of themselves, but they're also very important for the Friends Group. And it really is what allows us to host thousands and thousands of educational um, of children to come to the educational programs at the sanctuary. You know, a good holiday gift giving idea is buy a ticket for the film festival. Oh, that's a great idea. It is a great idea. Yeah, you tickets know, something, will... and and I mean, if they came for one one movie, they right. one film, they would love you know love that gift. I think so too. I think that's a great idea. And tickets should be on sale definitely in time for stocking stuffers and for okay. Christmas presents. Okay, so mm -hmm. someone wants any more information or has any ideas or they want to join the Friends Together, best place yeah. to start is the webpage, which is? So the Friends website yeah. is uh, thunderbayfriends.org. Okay. And that's it's super easy to become a friend. Go straight there. You can also give us a call at uh, 356-8805 and extension 10 will get you straight to Kathy Green, okay. who is the staff um, friends liaison. So she's, she'll know about all things friends. And any of the other programming, go to your website and yes. that is Thunder Bay. Thunderbay.noaa, N-O-A-A dot gov. And check us out there. I think the most up-to-date place to visit is our, our Facebook page, which is Thunder Bay Shipwrecks. And we'll be posting um, how you can become a friend. Uh, there might be some incentive, well, there will be some incentive gifts to uh, joining the Friends Group okay. or uh, renewing your membership. And so check out the Facebook page. And then for Film Festival, we'll be showing all sorts of um, trailers and sneak peeks okay. on the Facebook page. And then one last thing I'll mention, like I mentioned the Sanctuary Store, and of course there's gonna be lots of Christmas yes. specials. In fact, we just got some new clothes in. I should, have, I should have brought one to show you. You should have. I'll do that next time, but some great athletic wear. Um, really stylish black with the logo, the, the Marine Sanctuary logo and NOAA logos, and there's some great Christmas gifts there at all price points. Okay, we're out of time. Okay. Thank you very much for being here. Look forward to seeing you next month. Thanks, Nancy. Please stay tuned for Don McMaster following these messages. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster. I'm president of Alpena Community College, and I'm pleased to have as our guest with me this morning, Kathy Abraham, assistant to the director of the Alpena Volunteer Center at Alpena Community College. Welcome. Good morning, Dr. McMaster. 
Pleased to have you with us. Uh, we're talking today about uh, Christmas Wish first, and that is a very uh, long-standing and a, and a very uh, important function that the Volunteer Center does for the community. I think it's been 37 years we've done it. Yeah. So tell us how things are looking uh, right now with that activity. Uh, currently, we the Christmas wish <coughs> list is underway. We are matching our donors with needy local children and families in the area. And the program runs through December 3rd. And if anyone is interested, any donors would like to call the Volunteer Center. We are open Monday through Friday, 9 to 4. And that number is 358-7271. And we also wel welcome cash donations also. Very good. So tell people who aren't familiar with it, there's a, there's a, a marriage, you might say, of volunteers and needy uh, young people. And how does that work? Well, right now, we're <clears throat> always looking for volunteers to assist with the Christmas wish list, and we match them up to needy children or families. Uh, we currently are looking for volunteers to assist with gift wrapping, sorting, receiving gifts from the donors, and that will be occurring November 30th through December 3rd. So again, if anyone is interested in volunteering to the Christmas wish list, they can contact us on 358-7271. Outstanding. So, how many in, a, in, an, in an average year? I mean, I've, I've walked through Besser Tech uh, 106 and 104 in particular. Those rooms are packed with gifts. How many uh, gifts will be distributed to um, young folks that need them? There will be a lot. Um, right now, we're very busy receiving calls and getting the, the gifts prepared. We're preparing for that. So, there, there are going to be quite a few this year. How do the calls, uh, who calls and how does that translate into gifts that are, that are donated to needy young people? I've always been curious about that. Um, our director, Kate Bruski, will receive the call. We track it in a database system and we match the donor with a code. And at that time, then Kate gives them detailed information as to the process that they need to follow. So it's very confidential and we track it very closely. Is there any age restrictions on the, ki on the young people who receive gifts? No, there are no age restrictions, <clears throat> just for needy families and children. So it's not, not only just the children, but also the families. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Really neat. Um, is there any um, restrictions on the type of gifts? Um, Kate usually goes into detail with that. Normally we have a form that, that the children need, what particular gifts they need and we try to go by that list. Very good. So uh, anything else you want to inform the viewers about uh, Christmas Wish? Uh, just if you're interested in volunteering, please contact the Volunteer Center at 358-7271. Good deal. That's a, that's a wonderful community activity and as we often say at uh, Alpena Community College, community is our middle name. Mm -hmm. You know, so the uh, outreach that you and Kate do and for the benefit of of young people in the community is very commendable, appreciated. So tell us a little bit more about what's going on in your shop. Um, a website I hear is new. We have a website that we're <clears throat> currently working on and we're hoping to get that rolled out the first of the year. And this is a website that actually supports nonprofit organizations that are seeking volunteers. And a lot of the communities are looking to volunteer for an organization. So this website will actually list all of the organizations that are seeking volunteers and they can just contact them. They can um, enter their information, track their hours. So it's going to be a really neat website. Very neat. Now is this, I know that you have, a spe you have special skills in this area. Is this something that you developed yourself or was it something that um, Kate and you purchased or tell us a little bit more about how that came to yeah, be. Yeah, Kate um, <coughs> actually purchased this through Galaxy Digital and we had our graphics people at ACC assist with the background. So it's a learning process, but it's going to be a really good handy tool for businesses, nonprofit, and volunteers. And when does that roll out? We're hoping the first of the year, but with a Christmas wish list, and we're also working on our spring schedule, um, we're hoping that we can squeeze it in. Will the, uh, it, will the website also contain the spring schedule and informational items that, uh, 
that uh, you folks are doing? At We're the, hoping to, yes. It'll give a web page of the Volunteer Center and the Community Education, and it'll touch on our ropes courses. Oh, yeah. And um, also our spring schedule and events and obviously the Christmas wish list. This sounds like a uh, this sounds like a real um, innovation and something to be excited about. Yes, we are. We're very excited. So tell us a little bit about the spring schedule. What uh, what sort of things are coming up that you're excited about? Well, right now I am preparing for the spring schedule, and these are non-credit courses. They're short, they're inexpensive, and they're a lot of fun. And we're also always looking for volunteers to teach. And if they're interested, they can give me a call. And it ranges from craft classes to cooking classes. And it's a lot of fun. And it's for the, you know, our community. Yeah. Then uh, give me an example, if you could, of some of those courses, uh, maybe in this, this last couple of months, some things that you folks have done. I walk by there and I, in the late afternoon or evening, and I see stuff going on all the time. Well, actually, um, this is my first year there, so I had some friends, and actually, I had my husband teach a Italian cooking class. Oh. And that went over really well. It was a lot of fun. He really enjoyed it. And it's just a really great program. I'm really excited to be part of it. And I also, as you know, teach for the Alpena Community College, and I taught a few courses there. So it, it, it ranges from the crafts, to the technology, and it really helps people that just don't want to take the whole 16-week course. And, very true. Yeah. So, yes, I knew you. I know you have uh, 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 very strong skills in software and teaching in that area. What, what particular class did you teach? Uh, we I taught Windows 8, and wouldn't you know, Windows 10 is coming out. <laughs> so, we'll be looking at that. But yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. And this would be people would come for two or three hours. You'd uh, give them the high points of what Windows 8 has has to uh, to offer, and they would pay. Um, how much would they pay? For well, it? it varies. the The courses vary, but a lot of times we'll have adult learners that'll step into a class, and sometimes there are, there are a lot of young students, and they feel intimidated. In this class for adult learners, the community education it's more demographically geared towards 50 and over and they're very comfortable with their own their own, their own age group so very good yeah. well it sounds like there's a lot of stuff going on in the volunteer center thank you for taking time to talk with me today and thank you for what you do for Alpena Community College and the community and thank you for watching we'll look forward to seeing you next week on Talk of the Town this has been Talk of the Town with your hosts, Nancy Smitham and Don McMaster. For a list of events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at wbkb11.com and click on the community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production. The Talk of the Town furniture and set design are provided by Young Appliance Art Van Furniture on US 23 South in Alpena.